So you guys want more slap bass? Here you go. Here comes the next section of the slap bass course. We're going to be talking about double thumb technique. Let's go. Right, guys we're going to start this thing from the ground up i'm going to be showing you the basics of this double thumb technique um, some of you might have you know experimented with this before some of you may have not but i'm going to start from the beginning anyway just to show you the basic uh roots to this technique also how to groove with this technique it's very hard to get a rhythm inside of that groove or inside of this technique um, especially once you first starting it out but anyway I'm gonna jump right into it. Like you just saw, I was playing with a with a pick, which I never do. Um, I rarely play with the pick. <laughs> I was just showing you guys. You can get the same effect from a pick as you can with your thumb. You're gonna have a little bit of a different sound. You hear that that almost that raking, um, that more of a string noise against the against the string with a pick. I don't. I threw it away. I don't even know where it's at. But anyway, <laughs> you're gonna get more of that string noise. You get a different sound, but you'll get the same concept. That's what I was trying to show you the most. You get the same concept with using your thumb. Your thumb can be used just as a pick, right? That up and down motion, you, you have your thumb kind of stiff, more stiff than usual, right? You're just going up and down the string. But the, the trick to that is, so I forgot to mention, if you guys haven't checked out the first two parts of the slap bass series of course, I'll probably put it up here or go check it out. Um, it's just named slap bass course or slap bass exercise. Um, it's all a part of one series. But anyway, go check that out before you come into that because I'll be talking about some things uh, in those tutorials um, that will relate to what we're doing now. So anyway, before you, you heard me mention about the stiffness, the stiffness of the thumb, right? So when you're coming back up, I know we all know how to go down, right? We know how to slap. All right, we have to hit that string. We want to go through the string. All right, for this case, we want to go through the string. I know I said before, you can either hit the string and come off of it or go through the string down to the next string below it. For that reason, you're going through the string. You got to come up. You got to come back up. All right, if you bounce off of, if you bounce off of it, there's no way you're already up. You're already up. You can't you can't <laughs> pluck the string back up if you're up in the air. All right, that'll waste more that'll waste more time. All right, so through the string, up against the string. So you're raking it with maybe the the middle part of your of your thumb. I don't know if you guys can see it. I probably zoom in on it. But your middle part of your thumb, your your fingernail, right? So your fingernail is really hitting that, or your nail bed, I should say. All right. So the problem that I see with a lot of people doing this, I'll say the the do's and don'ts really, but <clears throat> but the don'ts <laughs> is when they come up, they try to pluck too. Sorry if that was too loud. <laughs> they try to pluck too hard um, and try to get all the way under the string, which you don't need to do. All right, it's a very slight movement. If you get if you get it in the right spot, you can get that same effect. Now, another thing that I hear a lot of people saying when I show this technique or when I see them doing this technique or trying to learn it, they'll get frustrated because they're saying, "Oh, my 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 up pluck doesn't sound like, or my up slap doesn't sound like my down." It's not going to. It's not ever going to. It's going to have a different, completely different sound. So when you're going down, you're hitting it with the meat of your thumb, right? This this skin part, the flesh part of your thumb going down. So it's going to have a different sound coming back up because it's going to have more of a pick sound because your nail bed is hitting. It's kind of bringing it up, right? So it's going to have a different sound. You're not going to get the same frequency or the same exact uh, tone of that uh, slap when you're going up and down. It's gonna be a little bit different, so don't worry about that, right? That's the whole effect. So my practice, my suggestion to you guys would be, um, like I said before, with just the down slap, we went down all the strings. This one, I want you to go down the string, through the string, and back up. Take this slow, all right? If you're first starting this off, you're brand new to this, take it slow. Don't dig too far into the string because then you'll get caught up and then you'll really have a different frequency and a different sound and different volume and dynamic to your up pluck. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. You can even hear it now, the difference between that tone. Coming up is a little bit brighter than going down. 
and for the last string you do the same thing so we're just going to go up that's the basic i know we start like that most exercises like that when you're first starting off playing or even plucking with your your picking hand you're just going down the string all right we all know that okay so but it's the same thing it's just a basic um it's a basic principle that you really need to start off with this concept and with this technique, especially if this is brand new to you. So the next exercise or the next concept that I want to show you uh, to deal with this double thumb technique is to add our left hand in there now. All right, so now we weren't using it, we were just using open notes, open strings. Now we're gonna add our left hand to it. We're gonna play some notes. It doesn't even, doesn't even matter. For this sake, I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna play D. Right, my finger's gonna play the D on the A string. So the A, the D, the G, and then the C. All, excuse me, all on the fifth fret. Now, if you didn't notice already, my left hand is working a little bit more than what you see. Right, it's gonna, it's working a little bit more, and I'll, sh I'll show you what it's doing. It's not staying down. It's not. It's not just press down and then I'm, I'm not setting it and forgetting it, right? I'm not setting it down and just going for it. I'm lifting up each time I play that note. One. It's very subtle. I'll probably have to zoom in like a you know, a magnifying glass type of zoom in for you to even see that movement. But down. So I'm lifting up off after I hit the string. After I hit that note, I'm lifting up, but I'm not lifting all the way up. I'm lifting up just enough to mute the string. So watch that hand versus this hand. Right? So, same thing. Even when I go up. All right, makes it a little bit cleaner. Separates the notes a little bit. If I didn't do that, it'll sound like this. But since I'm lifting up and muting them a little bit more, a little bit more cleaner, right? A little bit more cleaner. So you can practice it both ways, but the way to lift up and mute that string helps more when you're getting to utilize this left hand. When you start to bring in more notes and more, like creating a bass line, um, that helps muting the string that way. Um, with the pick, I know, so I know I'm going to get this question. With the pick, <laughs> um, I was using a muting technique, a, a palm muting technique, when I was using the pick, just a little bit. I think if I was, I'm not sure. But like I said, I'm not a pick guy. Um, <laughs> I used to play guitar just a little bit, but I'm so, that's like the first time I even picked up a pick just for demonstration purposes. But anyway, but there was a, a palm muting technique that I was using with a pick because it was just easier for me to use. Um, I'll be showing you guys that too as well um, in the near, in the very, very near future. So stay tuned for that. Um, <clears throat> But anyway, we have our exercise. We're going up, down, up, down. Muting the string, lifting up on each string that we play. Lifting up, but not all the way. Just muting, this, just enough to mute the string. Just enough to lift up to mute the string to stop the string from vibrating. So, <clears throat> we're going to add a bass line to this. All right, I know that's what you guys want to get into. We want to add a bass line into this section, into this double thumb technique, um, so you can really get a feel for it. And you can start adding on to this technique as well, adding a pluck, adding your, your first finger, second finger, just as we did in the beginning in the first two courses, uh, in the first two tutorials of the slap bass, we started adding the, the pop in there. So what we're going to do for this bass line, like I said, we're going to start incorporating our, our index finger and our, our second finger, middle finger, all right? Now we're gonna add the, the popping in to the next part, all right? So what we're gonna do is gonna stay right there. All right, so in the key of D, all right, got thumb, we have thumb, thumb, up, and then pop. But anyway, in the meantime, you want to stay tuned for the next upcoming slap bass course. We're going to be talking about hammer-ons and double plucking, and we're going to be doing some fancy slapping and all the tricks and flips and things that you, I'm sure you guys want to figure out how to do. Uh, but anyway, stay tuned for that. Uh, just wanted to take a moment out to thank you guys. Uh, you have no idea how much I appreciate you for, for your support and for your comments, your likes, and your shares and everything like that. Uh, keep doing it. Keep grinding. Keep rocking. Until next time, see you.